Welcome to Fox Talks Business Podcast with your host, Tanya Fox. Tanya has been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, owning retail, service, and franchise. She holds no punches and is never afraid to talk about the nitty gritty. Together, you'll explore the good, the bad, and the motivational of business life, turning obstacles into opportunities and failures into successes. So grab your favorite drink and let's have some fun. Here's your host, speaker, crafter, and collaborator, Tanya Fox. Have you ever had an idea in your head for a book or an article that you wanted to write? I know I have, but kind of like my drawing, one of the things that happens quite often to me is that in my head, I have this beautiful picture of the scenic stallion kind of riding down a beach near water. But when I actually go to put it on paper, it kind of looks more like a hippo coming out of a pond. And that sometimes is what happens with my writing. In my head, I have this clear, concise idea of exactly what I want to get across to my audience. But when I try to put it to paper, it doesn't quite come across the same way. So I decided to hit social media and see if I could find a way to rectify this situation. And that's when I found Laura. Laura introduced me to the world of freelance writing. And I was able to discover that there are actually people out there that love doing this. They love taking your ideas and thoughts and turning them into clear and concise articles and even books. And so I kind of became obsessed with learning more about what freelance writing actually is. So I'm super excited that I was able to get Laura on my show so that she could turn on as many light bulbs for you as she did for me when it comes from getting your ideas from your head out onto paper. Now, Laura spent most of the beginning of her life preparing to be an educator, but she burned out after working as a middle school teacher in Baltimore City. So she decided to start a freelance writing career just on the side. But what she quickly realized that she was not only replacing, but surpassing her day job earnings and hitting the six figure mark in only 18 months. So in 2013, she decided to work full time for herself and started helping clients with content project management by levering time management and digital teams. She now teaches others how to build a fulfilling lifestyle businesses from home as a coach. She is also the author of a book that is coming out this month called Launch Your Own Freelance Writing Business. And she's doing that with Entrepreneur Press. I can't wait for this book to release. I am one of the ones that is on the list to get this book in pre-launch. And I'm so excited to have her on the show. So let's light up some bulbs for you. And then we'll get going. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Laura. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. So um, I just thought you could start us off by telling us a little bit about your journey to where you got to where you are now. I like to call it sort of an accidental journey because I did not plan to be a business owner. I was active in sort of a business organization when I was in high school and actually did a project about entrepreneurship, but never really considered that that was going to be me. So I went to college with the intention of becoming a professor, went to graduate school and was partway through a PhD program when I started teaching in a middle school. And that was when I realized that I did not want to teach, at least in the (laughs) traditional sense um, within the American public school system. So I figured, well, what am I going to do now, right? Like all my degrees are related to this, all my training. So I started inventorying all the skills I had and thought, maybe I can make a go of it as a freelance writer. I actually did it to make extra money. I was working at an insurance brokerage and I thought, this will pay the bills and I'm going to figure out now what I'm going to do with my life. And that ended up growing significantly and freelance writing was um, surpassing my income from my day job. So I decided to um, work full time as a freelance writer and have been doing that since 2013. So it's about six years I've been doing it full time, seven years since I started. So tell us a little bit about what a freelance writer is. 
A freelance writer, you'll hear that term for people who do different types of writing. So traditionally, freelance writers have been people who are pitching magazines or trade publications to write articles or to get a column in there. But the surge of technology has kind of changed that. So now people need content for their websites, for their online funnels, for their email newsletter, for all these different things we do in the digital world. So I am a freelance writer in the online marketing sense. I help my clients get found on search engines and I help them convert their clients and get them to sign up for email lists and things like that. Freelance simply means you're working for multiple people at the same time rather than having an employer where you work just for that person and you get, you know, a salary or something like that. So a lot of people I'm sure are listening to this and going, oh, well, I can do that. I can find content. But I know from our previous conversation that uh, that can be a little bit deceiving. So if someone's interested in becoming a freelance writer, what are some of the skills that they need to make sure that they have? The very first thing that you have to have is an awareness of grammar and punctuation. You don't need to be perfect. I couldn't diagram a sentence if you asked me to do that, but you need to have a good sense of what is proper. Where do commas go? What, what is the difference between, you know, a dash and a hyphen and these sorts of little things that might show up in your work. You don't have to be professional. That's always a skill you can brush up on, but that basic sense of it needs to be there. Being a great reader is another sign that you'll be a good writer. That's because you encounter vocabulary, patterns of writing, flow within a work. I, you can identify tone. So being a great reader often means being a really good writer because you are frequently coming into contact with other people who are great writers. And then, of course, some of the aspects of being an online entrepreneur, you should be pretty self-disciplined because it's completely on you to bring in your own paycheck and being organized because you'll be working for multiple clients at a time. So if someone mentions something to you in an email or on a phone call, it's your job. How am I going to track that? How am I going to make sure that this project doesn't fall off my radar and I miss a deadline? So it's your job to find systems that will keep you organized too. So you had said in, um, when we had talked previously that one of your biggest obstacles that you faced in business was time management. Tell us a little bit about some of the issues that you had with that and then how did you overcome that? When you first become a business owner, after you've had some experience in a traditional job, you have an employee mindset. So your employee mindset means you show up between nine and five, you get a lunch break in there, you probably get some other breaks and you get done whatever you can get done in a day. Being an entrepreneur, you have to balance going out and bringing in new business and servicing your current clients and meeting deadlines. And that can be kind of overwhelming for someone who's relatively new to it. So one of the challenges that I faced was just figuring out how much lead time do I need to complete a certain project? If I tell a client it's due, uh, it's going to be turned in on Wednesday, how am I going to be sure that I'm going to meet that specific day and I don't exceed the deadline or let the client down. So there was a lot of trial and error of me practicing and, and you know, how much advanced time do I need from the client to know the title or the topic and how much time do I need to carve out for research and for editing that particular piece. So that was something that, and I still feel like for a lot of freelancers, that's an ongoing struggle because your business evolves and changes. So you're always looking for ways to optimize whatever time you do have. So if someone is, uh, has a business right now and they're struggling with trying to get content out, out um, what are some of the things that they should be looking for when hiring a freelance writer? Obviously, if they're in your area, they should contact you, but. <laughs> yeah, no, if you're hiring a freelance writer, the first thing you want to make sure is that you have a good communication style with them. Sometimes that can be achieved over email, but I like getting on the phone with my clients because I want to make sure we're using the same terminology. Do we have the same approach to creating content? Because I don't believe that a blog should be salesy. So if I get on the phone and the client's like, every blog should be selling something and include a buy now button, that kind of tells me we're probably not the best fit. So a phone call is a great way to tell if you're able to communicate effectively with someone. You want to look for someone who is very self-directed and is good at meeting deadlines. Unfortunately, writers have a somewhat 
well-earned reputation of being flaky. I like to say I'm in business because so much of my competition can't follow through and meet deadlines. The number of clients I've had who've said, oh, I hired someone and then they disappeared or they turned it in 20 days late. It's really disheartening. So make sure you ask them their experience about how did they meet deadlines in the past? If they missed a deadline, how did they handle that situation? Because it might happen at some point with you, but you want to know how they're going to respond to it. And that will give you a good sense of, you know, are there obstacles here that we can work around and would we work well together? And of course, you want to review their writing samples. Writing samples say a lot about their style and their ability to do research. So what sort of experience, like you've had abroad because you've been doing this for a while, but can you give us some examples of the diversity that you yourself have in being a freelance writer and, and different projects that you've worked on? Yeah, when you're a beginner, you start off doing a little bit of everything. And that's a helpful exercise because you don't know what you don't know. So until you work on a project that you hate, you don't know you hate it. Someone asked me to do some software how-to articles when I got started and I very quickly decided I will never take on any software type of project <laughs> again. Not my strong suit. But I didn't know that, right? And I right. also didn't know that I would like writing blogs or writing for attorneys as much as I do. So part of it is definitely get you know putting yourself out there and getting practice but my primary writing experience when I got started was in the academic world so I was editing people's master's theses and dissertations and proposals and then I realized you know hey I can probably teach myself some of these other skills writing website copy creating an about page and writing bios and so I've done all kinds of things most of my work is in the blog space or in writing emails that are designed to get people to either the audience is being nurtured or to take some specific action. Um, and those are great pieces to market as a writer because they're recurring and people need them on an ongoing basis. So what is your, I know what my favorite thing about your job is because you posted a picture not that long ago um, on the train in Paris and you were working and I was like, oh, that's the dream. Like, I just love that photo. But what is your favorite thing about this new career path that you took? It is so flexible. Now, sometimes it gets stressful because you're not always writing or working in ideal circumstances but I can flex it around our life. So last fall, my husband was leaving the military and interviewing for civilian positions. And we spent six weeks flying to two to three cities per week. And we would get in after he'd done like a full day of work at his regular job in the military. And then he'd get up the next morning and interview. So while all that was happening and we were flying all over the place, I was finishing the edits on my book. I was working on the airplane, in the airport, in the hotel rooms, on college campuses and coffee shops. And there were just so many moments I was like, man, I couldn't have a regular job and say, I need to take six weeks off to travel with my husband so we can figure out where to live for the next two years. So that flexibility is huge for me. That ability to say, I need to work less this month because there's a lot of stuff going on, or maybe I need to work more because I have a financial goal or something I'm trying to achieve. I think that's really unique and not something you can often get in a traditional position. That's so true. I was just the yesterday I was thinking about it because I was looking out my kitchen window and my trailer is now parked in our backyard. And I was like, I can work from there. Like I just, I was like, I think I'm going to move the office to the trailer just parked in the driveway. Like, and that's where I'm going to be. And so I just think like, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know. Well, first I, I would make a horrible employee. I sell, I totally admit that. <laughs> but yeah, I think for me too, the flexibility and especially, I mean, with kids has been so beneficial because I see so many people that struggle, right? Their kids are sick. They don't know what to do. And for me, I'm just like, man, whatever. I'll work upstairs today. <laughs> yeah. There's so many adjustments you can make that it's just, you don't think about it or realize it. There, there have been times when, you know, my husband and I needed extra money for something and it's like, he's waiting on a paycheck that comes only every two weeks. He's like, can you pick up another client so we can, you know, pay for this back deck to get redone? And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, like you never think about that. I know when I had a day job, it was like, I frequently felt like it was Tuesday or Wednesday and I had $5 because my Friday paycheck was basically already spent on bills. So it's very cool to always be able to go out and create what you want and adjust your circumstances as you need to. And I think for me too, that, that was nice too of going, you know what, it's like a slow time right now or the family's busy doing stuff and yeah, I'll load myself up 
with, you know, with stuff to do. But then I also have that flexibility to go, you know what, we want to go away for a while. I just went on a 20 day trip and was like, when else can I do that? I'm thinking there's no employer that would be like, yeah, sure. Go for 20 days and <laughs> well, exactly. you'll still have a job when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things that I, um, so we actually connected through a Facebook group, but I was so excited when you responded to come on the show because I had previously seen your TED Talks because I watched them absolutely religiously. So can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like, like how, what the lead up was and then what it was like to actually stand on a TEDx stage? Because that's just so exciting to me. So... So first things first, it is as cool as you think it is. <laughs> You're like, there, it was a lot of prep work. So in the prep work, I was like, man, I hope this is worth it. Cause I'm like walking around my house with my flashcards, trying to memorize this talk, reciting it five to six times a day. But the moment of actually doing it, um, was amazing. And for me, a there were multiple reasons why I wanted to do a TED talk. One was because there was hardly anything out there about the freelance economy. And yet it's such a huge thing, not just in the U S but around the world. And I was like, more people need to know about this because I found out about it by accident. And if I'd known in college, I would have started then. So that was a big part of it. I wanted to get the word out there, but I also knew that I am good at memorizing things that are like up to three minutes long. <laughs> Beyond that, I speak better off the cuff, right? So I was like, 15 minutes is really going to push my brain, like to write something and then being a writer, to write it, to speak it rather than to have it read. That was a challenge. The first edit I sent, they were like, yeah, this reads like an article. And I was like, well, what do you expect? <laughs> that's, what, that's what I do. So it was a real good place to challenge myself to say, can I do this? How can I get my message across in the most effective way? And also interacting with people who were professional speakers who are giving you feedback along the way of, hey, you're redundant here. One directly told me, he's like, you speak way too quickly. And it was, this was like the night before the talk. So I had to like really be focused when I delivered it to not go into my natural Laura pace of speaking. So I started in July of 2018. Um, I worked with someone who had familiarity with landing TEDx talks. They helped me prepare my application. They submitted to a bunch of places on my behalf. And I was rejected a lot, many, many times. We just heard nothing back or we heard a straight up, you know, thanks, but no thanks. And I started to get discouraged. But after a while, I knew if I just let some time go by, something would come through. And I got my first invite and then I received four invites after that and I accepted one. So I did a total of two talks. Um, and it's really unique. Like TEDx is its own experience. You have to have it memorized. It has to be no longer than 18 minutes. It has to be your spin on something that's been talked about or something that's never been talked about. And it's just really a unique experience to push yourself in that way. And so what has come out of doing those talks for you? Well, it's crazy because I think I even underestimated how much that would be a credibility builder. Um, it's really like for people who know me personally, they just think it's extremely cool. They're like, it, like it's the probably one of the first things they'll say about me if they're like talking to someone else, like, oh yeah, go watch her TED talk. That, and then they're like, oh, she's publishing a book. So it's like those two things are like to have other people talk about that in a sense, like an elevator speech, it helps my branding and credibility so much. It's funny. Three of my freelance writing clients emailed me after the talk, the first talk went live and they said, we probably can't afford you anymore. And I was like, interesting. Like there's this perception that because I did this TEDx talk, my rates are going up and I'm thinking like, maybe they should. Yes, they are. <laughs> I was like, this has happened three times now. So there's that. And then, you know, Part of the reason that I did it too is when my agent was pitching my book to publishers, we kept hearing lack of platform, lack of platform. So they wanted me to show that I had 10,000 people following me on social media. And that's not really my thing. I have a small crowd, but they're really active and engaged people. And a lot of them have bought something from me. So I kind of wanted to show like, 
because a publisher was essentially taking a chance on me, I wanted to show them that I could hustle. And I was like, watch, I'm going to get a TEDx talk. And like, so for the publisher to be able to market that and share that in conjunction with all of our marketing around the book, the book's about freelance writing. My talks are about freelancing. It's like they're seamless together and it's open doors to do public speaking as well. I've, I've been uh, contracted to do several speaking engagements at major conferences in the freelance industry already over the summer. So it's just weird. It's like that one thing has opened so many doors or helped me like up level in my business. So if you have the chance to do it, definitely do it. <laughs> and I love what you said about that you had that rejection and you just pushed through it because I remember doing a talk not that long ago um, when I was away on my trip and I stood out on stage and I was like, my name is Tanya Fox and I am a failure. And it was so funny to watch the faces of people like, is that what she just said? Like, did I hear her right? But that was the biggest lesson that I learned in business was that I always thought of failure as a bad word, as opposed to this is my learning experience. And if I sit in my failure, then yes, it remains a failure. But if I learn from it, it becomes a success. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a bad word. And I think you're going to come across that, especially, you know, being a freelance writer, um, you probably come across a lot of that rejection and it, the ones that succeed are the ones that, you know, can persevere through that. And you know, that, that old adage that, you know, every no is a one step closer to a yes. It is. And that's why I share that I was rejected so many times because on social media, of course I share like, Hey, I landed a speaking gig. I got a TEDx talk. I have an agent. There was a lot of rejection that led up to all of those things. Right. So I never want people to think like that. I just have this King Midas touch. And it's like, Laura went out and applied for one TEDx talk and she got it, delivered it perfectly. And everything's great. It's like, no, it was a real messy process, but I want people to know that because we often see these highlight reels of the successes. And I think it's equally helpful to tell your audience, oh yeah, I went to go, I had to go through X, Y, Z to get there. So prepare yourself for that if you do it too, because I got rejected by literary agents. We had a lot of publishing houses turn me down. I get rejected by potential clients all the time. So I kind of built up my rejection, you know, shell towards it. But I don't want anyone to think that you know, things just like magically happen to some people. Usually there were a lot of no's. And especially when you see people who are like an overnight success, they're usually an overnight success after like three to five years of really hard work behind the scenes. And then yeah. all of a sudden they explode. So I just try to like to give that perspective to people to not give up. Like if it's something you want to do and you're, you know, you're doing it the right way and you're questioning yourself and getting feedback when you can, then just stick with it. Yeah. And I think, and I, that's, I love that about you because I think like for me, that's so important too. Cause I get so many people that go, I wish I could be like you and just get up on stages and just talk and it doesn't bother me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I almost feel like I'm going to puke every time they read my bio. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's not there. I've just learned that I just need to get out there. And once I'm out there, I'm usually fine. And I said, but if I'm talking about something I know about, you can stick me in. I don't care. I'll talk to anybody about it. But if you were to stick me on stage and be like, okay, we want you to talk about quantum physics, uh, there, I would be like, uh, so this one episode of uh, Big Bang, like, I yeah, mean, I would no, be lost. No context. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, it's, it's different when it's something that, you know, that I'm passionate about. But yeah, I think that... I, I love it because I think that more people who have made it need to talk about, you know, that struggle. And I know sometimes we, we just want to ignore it, but I think those people that are following us think that, right? Like, look, mm -hmm. this person made it big, but they don't realize those nights where you're, you know, not too sure how you're going to put food on the table or you're crying because you're thinking like, it's just another rejection. How am I going to get past this? And so I think sharing that is, is really key and is really important not only for our journey, but for those, those people, you know, that ha are just are in that low point that need help. Right. Up. 
And it's not about being negative, but I think it's about normalizing the experience for people, yeah. especially when I work with freelancers or publish content that's for freelancers. I don't want you to think that you can go out in an hour and land a client, you know, magically, and they're going to pay all your bills and everything's going to be perfect. So I try to be really candid when I fire a client, when I lose a client, when something goes south in contract negotiations, I always try to share that with my audience because it's like, you might encounter this in some way someday. Here's how I would recommend dealing with it so that people aren't caught by surprise because owning a business is a wild up and down roller coaster. So be aware there are going to be low points. There will be points you question yourself. You don't feel qualified. You compare yourself to other people. All those things are going to come up. Here's how you push through it anyways. Yeah. And I think that's, that's so key. And I found like the more I've gotten into being more willing to talk about those I find the easier I get over them now because I find like I share the experience and then I'm like, okay, now I have all these people going, are you sitting in it or what are you doing? So I find it almost pushes me to be like, I have to find a solution to this because now I stuck it out there. I can't sit and, you know, I can't have my little pity parties like I used to. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So you briefly touched on a couple of times about your book, and I'm excited about this. It is um, launching really soon, actually, July 16th. So tell us about the book, why you decided to write it, and what that experience uh, has been like for you. So it was kind of like uh, six months before deciding to do the TED X talk, I was like, I've always wanted to write a book. Like that's my dream career as author. And I'm, I'm super close with freelance writer. I'm very, I'm in the same atmosphere, but I knew that I wanted to write a book. So, uh, I put together a book proposal that took me about four months. And just like we were talking about, I questioned myself so much I, as a writer, I overanalyzed everything that was in that proposal and changed it and then changed it back. And then I started pitching it to agents and had a couple of agents who were interested and ultimately went up uh, going with one. And she was trying to sell a different book. She was trying to sell the, uh, my proposal was completely different than what the book is coming out as. And because I'm a newbie and because I have a smaller platform, one publisher came back and it was a publisher with a great name, the publishing house behind Entrepreneur Magazine came back and said, we really need an introductory book on freelance writing. Could we do that instead of what you're pitching? And I was like, well, this isn't really what I had wanted to do, but do I have expertise here? Yeah, I know how to start a freelance writing business. So um, it was a really quick turnaround time in the publishing world. It usually takes a total of two years from idea to finished like book in your hand. We signed the contract in September. The first draft was due December 1st. My edits were due mid-January and the, it's the beginning of June now. And the, the books are actually coming from the printer to me. My copies are coming in the next 10 days. So it's like amazing how fast I was like, whoa. And of course that's had me questioning like, what did I leave out of the book? Like, what am I missing? Cause I couldn't fit everything in there. So it was really a unique experience to get to go through what it's like to work with a publisher and a copy editor and the marketing team at the publisher. And I've just been really lucky because entrepreneur press is just awesome to work with. So it's been a really good experience. So where can people go to find this book in July when it comes out? Yeah, it's available for pre-order now. And if you type in freelancewriting101.com, that'll take you right to the Amazon sales page. And if you continue to follow me in any way, we're going to have some really good like pre-order bonuses. We have a 30-day launch calendar. Here's what you should do to get ready to launch your freelance writing business and some cool video trainings and things like that. Um, so definitely check out my, my website, betterbizacademy.com, because that's where all that good stuff will be as we get closer to the book. And then what social media platforms can all of our listen listeners follow you on as well? I would say the most relevant one. So in the spirit of like focusing on where it's where I have the most success and good following, uh, find me on LinkedIn. Look me up as Laura Briggs. I regularly post content about freelance writing and my experience and, and connect with me on there. If you're going to be a prospective freelance writer or freelancer, LinkedIn is an extremely valuable lead source. So you should become active there anyways. And you can kind of see what I'm doing and how I'm using it to help, you know, mirror that for your own experience. 
That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for all of the information and for taking time out of your day to join me. I know that uh, I'm really excited. I no desire to be a freelance writer, but I'm still really excited to read the book because I loved the talk and I was like, oh, one day. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I know my limitations. In my head, I can think of a really good book, but it doesn't come out. So I'm glad that they're out there and <laughs> I'll make sure I hire someone else to write it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So any tips that you can, any extra tips that you have to give our listeners just before we go here? Yeah. If you have something that's like a burning desire dream in the back of your mind, just go for it. You will always be scared. And anytime you see anyone putting themselves out there in a big way, a book, launching a podcast, starting a new website, doing a TEDx talk. Trust me, they are terrified, but they felt the fear and did it anyway. So know that that's completely normal, but it's also kind of part of the fun to get your adrenaline going. Like, am I really putting myself out there in this big way? So push through it, do it anyways. You're going to be scared. You might feel like you don't know what you're doing. That's okay. You'll find the resources that you need to help you get there. So whether it's launching a business or doing something else, if it's sitting on your heart, it's there for a reason. I love that. That's wonderful. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. And I look forward to the book launch July 16th. And we will make sure that we put all of the links so that you can um, find Laura and get on the list so that you can see the book before it gets out. Yes. Thank you so much. I don't know about all of you Foxy listeners, but I took so much away from not only this episode, but in my pre-interviews and just my interactions of following Laura on social media. She is such a wealth of inspiration and knowledge that it has just been a pleasure to get to know her more. Some of my favorite things in this episode was definitely when she talks about creating what you want by adjusting your circumstances. And as an entrepreneur, we have to remember that that's something that we can do. So if we need to take an extra day off to be with our kids, or if we need to make a little bit of extra income, that is some of the benefits of being an entrepreneur. And I know sometimes we get stuck in the rut of everyday life of business, but that's something that is sort of a privilege to be able to do. And I also loved that she talked about feeling the fear and doing it anyway, when she was referring to talking on stage. And you know what, that's a key thing, because oftentimes, we allow the fear of the what if to stop us in either pursuing a new career, or pursuing a new avenue in business, bringing a new product in or starting a partnership or collaboration with someone. So sometimes we just have to take the jump and do it. So if you are interested in becoming a freelance writer or even knowing a little bit more about it, head over to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca. You'll see blogs at the top of the page. Just click on there and you'll see Laura's amazing face and you'll be able to see all of the ways that you can connect with her, that you'll be able to find the direct link to find her book on Amazon and all of the ways that you can interact with her in the future. I know that you're going to be just as much of a fan of her as I am. So again, thank you so much to Laura for coming out and being a guest. It was a little bit dicey because she was traveling and had some issues, but in the end, it all worked out. And I was so happy that we will were able to sit down and record before her book launched. So have that date written down because I know it's July 5th now if you're listening to this as soon as it airs and her book is being released on the 16th. So you're going to want to head over to that link so you can get your copy. And don't forget to visit us on social media, whether that be Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn, and let us know what the last thing was that you wrote or what idea you have in your head of a book that you've just always wanted to write. I want to know your ideas. Get it out there on paper. Tell somebody about it. Make it a reality, whether you write it yourself or whether you get someone to freelance it. And as I always say at the end of all of my episodes, no matter what you're doing in your life, make sure you're having fun. Because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? Oh, 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 oh,